Hi dears, welcome to English class of Saturday Athika Rinesh. Today we are going to learn a lesson on three news to adulthood which is written by the great disability rights activist Malni Chip. Before starting the lesson, let's learn more about the author Malni Chip. Actually, this lesson is taken from her autobiography One Little Finger. Let's go through some of the main incidents those happened in the life of the author Malni Chip. She was born in Calcutta in the year 1966. As we have already mentioned, she was a disability rights activist. She stood for the uh, disabled persons. She herself was suffering from cerebral palsy. As a result of this, she could not move as freely as normal people are doing. By suffering such a kind of disability, she was shocked by the life of other disabled person, persons and she always stood for their rights too. We have already said about her disease that is she was uh, affected by cerebral palsy and it resulted in the loss of oxygen. As a result of this, uh, she was not ad admitted to any normal school. At last, her mother, uh, Mithu Alur, started a school called the Center for Special Education and Malni Shib studied there. After that, she uh, continued her studies abroad in the UK. Uh, she holds two postgraduate degrees from London. After her education, uh, she has worked as the CEO and trustee of ADAPT. ADAPT means able, disabled, all people together. Let's mention some of the awards and honors received by Malni Shep. She has been awarded National Award for the Empowerment Persons with Disabilities in the category Role Model during the year 2011. In the same year, she has been awarded the first Global Palsy Day Award. During 2014, a movie was being made on the base of her life by name Margarita Vitestro. We know this chapter and train news is taken from Malvi Ship's autobiography, One Little Finger. Let's learn some more points on One Little Finger. Here, she is describing herself as a woman who dragged her out of the limitations. She was born of cerebral palsy and suffered lack of oxygen. Anyway, she herself dragged uh, to the mainstream, to the limelight. She, uh, even though she had suffered a lot, she had a lot of limitations. She is not at all ready to shut up in a single room and cry. She wanted to go out and explore the world. Her life or the achievements in her life all are a result of this kind of determination. This spirit is being conveyed in, in her autobiography, One Little Finger. The particular chapter, Andre News to Adulthood, discusses her visit to the university town of Berkeley. She was shocked and surprised uh, by the life in Berkeley because the even the disabled people are very comfortably uh, walking, not at all uh, literally walking, but they are walking uh, by means of their wheelchair, electric wheelchair. So she was surprised by seeing the life of the disabled persons in the university town of Berkeley. And at the same time, she is comparing the life of Berkeley to the life of disabled persons in India. So uh, here she is telling about uh, the rights of disabled persons. They are also human beings and they too want to live on this earth as other human beings. It's not at all their fault uh, that uh, um, 
having disabilities in them. Let's go through the chapter Entry News to Adulthood, uh, which is taken from her autobiography, Marni Chick's autobiography, One Little Finger. In this chapter, as we mentioned earlier, she is describing about uh, her shock or surprise over the life of disabled persons in the university town of Berkeley. She is contrasting the life in Berkeley and uh, the life in India for the disabled persons at first. We know that she uh, traveled to or she visited uh, the U.S. in 1988 with her father. We know she was very much surprised by the electric wheelchair access by the disabled people. Such people were not at all hinted or obstructed by the mainstream society, but the society made their life so smooth as they were allowed to the uh, traffic or to the public roads, etc. Ramps were made uh, to smooth their um, entrance to universities, schools, shops, theater, restaurant, museum, etc. There were no limitations for the disabled people in the university town of Berkeley. But in India, all these things are unattainable attainable during that time. There, the entire pavements, pavements means roads and roadsides are uh, the ways to uh, uh, the universities as well as the shops, schools, etc. were rammed so that electric wheelchairs can be easily entered to such institutions. She is contrasting between the Indian towns and Berkeley here. At that time in India, even the most reputed five-star hotels were not at all allowing these disabled people to enter. There were no ramps at all. The Indians were not at all thinking about the life of the disabled people, how they are living and what are the needs of these people instead. In Berkeley, the life of the disabled people uh, were very smooth and they are independently living there with their electric wheelchairs. So they were holding the offices and power there as they were, they, they could easily enter to institutions like uh, colleges and schools. So they can uh, educate and they can um, enter to offices uh, where they are working and they can attain the power positions there. But in India, uh, they are not at all getting enough education so that they uh, could not get uh, proper jobs, especially government jobs and high positions. So this uh, was a very a drastic contrast between the Indian uh, society or the attitude of the Indian society towards the uh, disabled people and uh, the attitude of the U.S. people towards the disabled people. So uh, uh, the people in the U.S., uh, that especially the disabled people in the U.S. are also uh, interdependent. They are uh, not at all fully independent, but they are interdependent. They should have to uh, depend upon a person. Uh, she is comparing this situation into a very beautiful situation. That is even the um, normal people or people uh, with no disabilities are seeking the help of some skilled laborers for some uh, works. That is, we need a carpenter uh, to uh, maintain uh, our doors and windows, and we need a skilled laborer for all those skilled uh, works. Like that, a disabled person is also needed a, uh, a uh, helper or a, an assistant to assist them. It is just a matter of assistance. For this purpose, she appointed, actually her mother appointed a Nepalese woman by name Maya, 
uh, as her assistant. She is very positive and she was a very good assistant of Malni Shiba when they were living in the U.S. From the U.S. with their family, she went to the U.K. There, she was very much attracted by a course which was offered by the Oxford Polytechnic. That is a course in publishing. She applied for the program. Then they returned to India. She started ADAPT to assist the disabled people. The name of this uh, program or the name of this society that is ADAPT was suggested by one of her friends, Zubin. Uh, he worked with her for a uh, long period of time in support of the disabled people. Uh, she enjoyed the company of Zubin very much. ADAPT uh, made uh, an interaction between people with disabilities and abilities. Hope you have understood the problems faced by Malnishib and other disabled people and how she tackled this by visiting the U.S., especially the Barclay town. Uh, anyway, uh, read the text very thoroughly and uh, prepare the answers uh, to the questions which were put at the back side of the text. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.